insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Tomorrow, where we take a deeper look into how the issues of today will impact the world of tomorrow, from politics and world news to media and technology. We discuss how today's headlines are becoming tomorrow's reality. Welcome to Insights into Tomorrow. This is episode 17, Women's Rights Are Human Rights. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my special guest host this week from our Insights into Entertainment podcast, Michelle Whalen. How are you doing today, Michelle? Full of many, many emotions. I can imagine. We had uh, actually planned on doing this podcast for a little while now. We've been working on putting it together and stuff. Right. Understanding that there was going to be an impending decision. Um, and we today was the scheduled day that we were going to do this. Right. Not knowing. Not knowing that yesterday was going to be the day that the other shoe dropped. Right. So we're going to continue to go through the material that we did plan. And we reserved the last segment to have an open discussion on the groundbreaking, rule-shattering, country-damaging decision, I think, that came yesterday. Um, So there's been a disturbing trend in recent years in the United States. There's been an assault on women's... uh, An assault has been waged on basic human rights... Victims of this assault have been chosen by color of their skin and their gender and various other things. All are victims that have been targeted for generations and have fought for their equal human rights. In this episode of Insights into Tomorrow, we're going to take a deeper look at the assault specifically on women's rights. We'll take a look at the history of women's rights through the years. We'll examine the current state of women's rights and we'll explore the threats against those rights. Before we leave, we'll take a special look at the current issue of abortion and the not-so-impending Supreme Court decision that threatens to overturn, which it did overturn, Roe v. Wade. But before we do that, I'd like to take a moment to invite our listening and viewing audiences to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Tomorrow, You can find video and audio of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things, and you can pick those up anywhere you can get a podcast these days. We're pretty much everywhere. I would also invite you to write in, give us your comments, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing. Email us at comments at insightsintothings.com, where you can find links to all of our social media on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? As ready as we'll ever be. Let's get into it. So, all women are entitled to human rights. These include the right to live free from violence and discrimination, to enjoy the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health, to be educated, and to own property, to vote, and to earn an equal wage. Across the globe, many women and girls still face discrimination on the basis of sex and gender. Gender inequality underpins many problems which disappropriately affect women and girls, such as domestic and sexual violence, lower pay, lack of access to education, and and inadequate Healthcare. For many years, women's rights movements have fought hard to address these inequalities, campaigning to change laws 
or taking to the streets to demand their rights are respected. And new movements have flourished in the digital age, such as the Me Too campaign, which highlights the prevalence of gender-based violence and sexual harassment. So there has been a fairly long history of, of women's fight for their rights, um, in the United States at least, uh, because when the country was formed, there was no explicit provisions in the Constitution for women's rights to anything. Mm -hmm. The Constitution protect, protected, quote, consent of the government, which, uh, I'm sorry, consent of the governed, which at the time meant white men, white landholding men mm -hmm. only. Right. The Bill of Rights did not protect everyone either. Women were considered second-class citizens. They were essentially property of their husbands. So women started to organize as early as the Seneca Falls Convention in July of 1848. It planted the seeds for the women's suffrage movement. It pushed for equal rights for all people of all races and sexes. The end result was the signing of the Declaration of Sentiments by a hundred men and women, a document based on the Declaration of Independence. So we move into the women's suffrage movement. This is really probably the, the foundation for the first fight for women's rights. Mm -hmm. uh, Wyoming passed the first law granting women the right to vote in 1869, and was the first state to grant women the right to vote in all elections in 1890. But it took until 1920 for the 19th Amendment to the Constitution to allow women the right to vote across the country. So now let's talk a little bit about abortion and contraception. So there were widespread anti-contraception laws on the books as late as 1819, before they were challenged, starting with uh, Margaret Sanger in New York. Abortion laws criminalized the act of ending a pregnancy apart from saving a woman's life were in place and well into the 60s before any challenges were raised. These obviously culminated into the 1973 Roe v. Wade Supreme Court ruling that being drawn into question, unfortunately... <laughs> As of yesterday. Yeah. So then we move on to women's equal employment and equal pay. The first minimum wage laws applied to women didn't come into effect until 1912. This was later superseded by the 1938 Fair Labor Standards Act, imposing a federal minimum wage regardless of gender. It wasn't until 1963 with the Equal Pay Act that any attention was given to equitable wages for wages, well, wages too probably, <laughs> but, but wages for the same work performed by men. It took until 1974 for Congress to include gender protection in fair housing and education as part of the, uh, uh, as part of the Civil Rights Act. Now, it's worth noting that even though these laws were on the books, they're on the books today. They're not observed. Mm -mm. They're not, there's still discrimination today despite the fact mm -hmm. that, that we have these laws on the books. Right, exactly. And finally, leadership in government. So the first woman to serve in Congress was Jeanette Pickering uh, Rankin, who didn't take her seat until 1917 but it would take nearly a hundred years for a woman to take on the leadership role of Speaker of the House when Nancy Pelosi assumed that role for the first time in 2007. And we didn't see our first Supreme Court justice until 1981 with Sandra Day O'Connor. And Madeleine Albright was our first Secretary of State in 1997. And obviously, our first female Vice President, Kamala Harris, in 2020. So, the disturbing trend that I see in this history here is there's spurts of progress. There's long periods where there's no progress. Then you get a few exceptional people that just get mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore, mm -hmm. and they do something about it. Yep. And the establishment throws a couple of crumbs out there and gives a little bit of rights to people. 
and then there's a long period of time until it happens again. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you think this compares to other fights? For, you know, civil rights, for instance. How do you think this compares to civil rights for African Americans and minorities? It, it, it's almost the same, really. When when you think about it, unless you are a a rich white male, you're fighting every day. You yeah. know, and and maybe once in a while something comes along that you you get something. And, you know, and then unfortunately something else in the news is going to pop up where everybody's mindset is on something else and that fight still hasn't been won. Yeah. And until something happens with that fight again, everybody kind of forgets about it because, again, our, you know, our our attention span, you know, w- <laughs> is you know we have short attention span theater you know of, of our minds you know look at you know not to get on an, a, a totally different tangent but all of the the school shootings you know it's been how many weeks and none of that is in in the news there you know you you have the the gun reforms that are, are they're trying to pass but again, now that you have everything going on with Roe v. Wade, that's the main focus. But yet there's other things that still need to be focused. Black Lives Matter still needs to be a focus because not, a, you know, you, you had everything that went on with George Floyd and and all the other um, African-Americans who with the police issues and things like that. And none of that was solved, but because something else came along, oh, well, now our attention, we have to, but no, you have to go back and do all the other things. It's it's funny you mention that. What do you think is the cause of that? Is that a media issue? Is that a society issue? Is it a politics issue where politicians don't want to deal with the issue, so they distract with something else? Or is it is it media just trying to get ratings that's dictating what our, what our, our um, issues are today? I don't know. I think it's a little bit of I think I think everybody's a little bit to blame with with all of that. Um because obviously media is is one aspect, you know, and and when you kind of think back of okay, well why did it take so long, you know, so Wyoming, you know, it was the 1800s when, you know, Wyoming, but it wasn't until the 1900s that it was actually and you have to think back then, how long did it take for news to travel? How long, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, same thing with, with Juneteenth, you know, the, you know, it was signed into law that blacks were no longer slaves, but how many years did it take for the news to actually travel? Right. You know, th- there was no quick way to do it where now, we have that instant gratification. We can, you know, as soon as news broke yesterday of the Supreme Court's decision, everybody in the world knew about it. So I, I think a lot of it is the because we're so hungry for information right now. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's you know, what do I need to do? And also, we're all so tired. We're all so tired of having to stand up for everybody and 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 there's just so much injustice it's like well where do i put my you know my energy where's my next fight yeah and it's like i have no more spoons to give my my jar is empty because i've given you know w- w- you know so much because there's so much that's needed yeah. you know from all of us i think that's you know where it where it comes to because there's obviously thousands and thousands of organizations and different things that are are in need but it's you know how much can the average person give before you have nothing left to give sure yeah yeah i mean it's historically it's it's definitely been a problem Let's take a a little break. We'll come back and we're going to talk a little bit more detail about where we are right now with these specific women's rights. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild 
in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So let's talk about the current state of women's rights. And we'll talk first about women's suffrage. At the moment, it's safe to say that fight has been eh, won, I guess, kind of, sort of, in, in, in the, the general statement, yes. If nothing else, we can say that women are equally discriminated against <laughs> with everyone else when it comes to your right to vote, DT. <laughs> Yes. Okay, there's they're, no special they're, discrimination. Right. Okay. I, 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 okay. We can go with that. <sighs> Abortion and contraception. Hmm. Well, this had been one, but it looks like it might be a split decision with the much anticipated ruling from the majority right wing Supreme Court that was held yesterday. And we'll have more on this later on in the show. So we take a look at employment and pay. So legally on paper, this was a win back in 1963 with the Equal Pay Act. Do you feel like this was a win? <laughs> no. And I, think, and I think most women would be of the same opinion. In practice, there's a long fight ahead of this one. Progress continues to be made but not nearly enough to level the playing field between men and women, equal pay, equal work. It's a mess. And the fact that people are still getting away with it is frankly dis disturbing, mm -hmm. you know, that you can get away with it. Yep. Leadership in government. There was a surprising amount of progress early on this, but it's been painfully slow in coming into the modern time. Since, you know, the... 80s, 2000s, we've seen some progress here. Many parts of the country are progressive enough to make the progress that's needed. There are other parts and less progressive, less evolved parts of the country where politics is still an old boys network. But from a national standpoint, we're seeing, I mean, we have a female vice president now, mm -hmm. which yeah. is huge. How do you think... Let's talk women's suffrage. Your your ability to vote. Do you feel you have the ability to go out there and vote when you want, for who you want, how you want? Absolutely. And and that's something I've never felt I wasn't able to do. I I've never felt that I wasn't allowed. Um, you know, even in high school, senior year was when I was I turned 18 and I had a history teacher who was very passionate about the women's movement and made sure she had her little pamphlets in her desk drawer and who's turning 18 this month, fill out your form so you can vote. And she said, it doesn't matter if it's a presidential election, if it's a, a governor election, even your little local election, you will vote every time because there are women that died yeah. doing this. It is your heritage. It is your responsibility to pass this on and make sure you vote. How do you think the... How can I say this without getting hate mail? <laughs> how do you think the outcome of the 2020 election... Mm. And or the, the 2016 election, we can even go. You, you could, but specifically the 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 2020 election, in which there was an artificial stigma built up about 
the legitimacy of the election and voting and voter fraud. And it, it drew the entire country into that. And now we're seeing certain states that support a certain party mm -hmm. are now imposing laws that, if not discriminating against people from voting, will make it harder, making it much more Absolutely. difficult. And that's... Do you feel threatened by that? Fortunately, I don't because at this point we are in a very blue state and I've never felt threatened going to our polling places. We don't have far to travel. We usually never have more than five minutes to wait if we even have a wait whenever we've gone. And I know that's not the case for states right next to ours, where people will wait in line hours to to cast their vote um, or have to travel, you know, an hour to, to get to their polling place. And I would probably feel intimidated if I had to go through all those measures you know, and almost jump through hoops to fulfill my civic duty. Right. And it shouldn't, nobody should have to feel that way to do that. Absolutely. Abortion and contraception. So for now, we're going to put abortion aside because we, we already have a discussion on the last segment. Contraception. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you can acquire the contraception that you want and that the health care that you need as far as women's health is readily available to you? Do you think that's a threat? Do you think progress needs to be made on that front? So, again, being a white female, a middle-class white female in a blue state, I don't feel discriminated at all against any health care. I know that's not the case for others of my gender in other parts of our country. That, that now that that is something that there are rumors about being taken away... Now you see all over social media people saying if you're on some sort of IUD, if you're on any sort of implant, get your get it replaced now. Anything that, you know, has a couple of years because we don't know what's coming down the pike. The fact that some male can make a decision what I do with my body absolutely blows my mind. And that, you know, whether or not I'm a married woman or a single woman should have nothing to do with it either. And that if I want to have a child by, it should be by choice. Right. I should not be forced. I am still of age where I could have a child. I am not <laughs> at this at a point where I would want to begin that process all over again. And I need to have that body autonomy that that's my right to to decide that and nobody else should decide it. I don't make a decision for Anybody, if they want to be on Viagra or not, or if they want to get, you know, reconstructive surgery or some, I, I don't make that decision for anybody else. So nobody should be making a decision sure. for what I do to myself. And I agree 110%. As long as you don't expect the government to pay for it, then right. it's your say what you do. Mm -hmm. I'm totally down with that. Mm -hmm. Employment and pay. <laughs> Where do we stand with this? Do you think there's su sufficient progress? 
Do you think you're compensated uh, fairly for what you do? And do you <laughs> think that there is a threat to that looming? I don't know. I, you know, it, it's one of those things because, of course, you know, at most places of employment, one of the rules is you don't talk about how much you make. So, you know, you don't find out how much somebody else is, is making. Um, so that's, that's a really hard, you know, I can, I know, or I shouldn't say, I, I assume within the company that I work in, there are people that work in the North Jersey facility that make much more money than the people in the South Jersey and, and facility. That's and not that's not unusual because of geographic. Right, absolutely. But again, it shouldn't matter where I'm physically located because I'm doing just as much work as Well, there's certain somebody factors else. like cost of living and stuff like that. Absolutely. That you have to factor oh, in totally. I, I totally. But compensation wise, on a one to one ratio, are you being fairly compensated? I, I really don't know because it's one of the things that probably bad on me is I kind of stopped paying attention because there's always these websites you can go to and say, you know, how much does a person that does this job make? And the thing is, what I do for a living is kind of specific to, to my job. Jo you know, so it's kind of hard to say if I went someplace else where I could kind of try and figure it out. And I think I might be, I know I'm probably underpaid. Um, just one, because I'm, you know. Uh, is it, but, it, but is it because you're a woman or because you, you're a one of a kind person doing what you do? I don't know. It might be a combination of, of both. We recently at my company had somebody who left the company who was a woman. I never asked her or found out how much she made. I knew she probably made more than I did, even though I've been with the company much longer than she had been. And we recently hired somebody who I knew was a grade level or a position higher than her. And I have a feeling probably started out making more than she did. Okay. So that's another, you know. So clearly we're not where we need to be. No. Leadership and government. So my question to you here is, clearly we're seeing progress in, on the certainly on the federal level. Mm -hmm. A lot of states are making progress with yeah. women in leadership positions. You personally, do you think the door is open for you if you wanted to get into, say, local politics? Do you think you'd have any obstacles with that? Do you think you'd be discriminated against because of your gender? Mm, I don't know. I think, I think in a lot of cases it's still a boys' club when you come to, you know, your your local. Um, you know, but I'm sure there are some areas of the country where it's not like that. Um, I've never been interested in, in wanting to run for a government position, so it was never uh, something that I, I, I thought about. But I could see where I, I wouldn't, you know, again, where we live, where we are. I'm sure if it was something where I started volunteering or doing things... I could, you know, eventually see something. You know, what's interesting is of the of the four fundamental rights we talked about, three of these you attributed to some level of political influence on how it impacts you. Mm -hmm. That's disturbing. That that women's rights are a matter of politics. And they shouldn't be. No, they shouldn't. And I think that is a highlight of, of where we are today. And it astounds me. And we're not going to pull any punches here. You're obviously a Democratic supporter. <gasps> I am. How did you know? What astounds me <laughs> is your experience, I would say, is pretty typical for most women. Democratic women and, or Republican women. But there are so many staunch Republican women 
that support a party that has for for over a century had policies that were contrary to women's interests. Mm-hmm. And what is it about people like that who would support someone who wants to hold you down? Like, is it a, I almost attribute it to like a beaten wife syndrome mm-hmm. type thing. Yeah. Where they just accept the, their place as a lesser citizen in society. And, and you have to kind of think that, you know, there are, are still women that are, 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 you know, young girls, women that are, are raised today to your only job in life is to raise the family right. and be, and support your husband. And that's, that's it. And, and I'm not knocking anyone that, that's what they want to right. do in and their life. If, if that that's is, what you aspire to do, knock your socks off. Right. But don't hold other people back Exactly. In the but don't tell me that I can't do more. Absolutely. Or tell my daughter that she can't be yeah. more. Yeah. That's my hang up about this whole thing. As much as I hate seeing how you are treated, it irks me to think that she's going to face some of these same prejudices. And it... it it really pisses me off, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to do everything I can to make sure that she's got every opportunity. And I'm, has. I'm so proud <laughs> of, of what she stands for yeah. and what she believes in. And yes, a lot of it has to do with, with us, but there's a lot that, you know, is her own, yep. you know, and, and I'm so glad that we raised her and are still raising her to be so open-minded to, to things. And she, in so many cases is more open-minded than we will ever be. And, and that gives me hope that, you know, she's also surrounded, you know, she surrounds herself with people that feel that way too, yeah. and that that generation will hopefully make a difference and and bring about so much that more than we could ever hope for. I'm also very fortunate that she's patiently she's patient enough to help educate carry me along in that journey. Yes, I've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. I've learned a lot from her that I never thought I would learn. Mm-hmm. Let's take another break, and when we come back, we're going to take a look at what some of the obstacles and threats are to these rights. We'll be right back. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. So threats and obstacles to women's rights in America. And, you know, we'll attack these rights as we've been doing in order. So the first one we're going to talk about is women's suffrage. So in the wake of the toxic 2020 elections, there's been a wholesale attack on voting rights. These attacks aren't targeted specifically at women and are designed to make it harder for people in general to vote. Not too much in general, but there's specific segments of the population that are targeted Mm -hmm. at. So some of the obstacles. 17 states have enacted 28 new laws that restrict access to voting. Um... By targeting citizens with disabilities. You know, the fact that they're 
not including accessibility, uh, common accessibility options to get into voting places that make it difficult for people with disabilities to vote. Mm -hmm. They're attacking absentee voting. After the 2020 election, when, <coughs> excuse me, when absentee voting was done because we were in the middle of a pandemic. Right, right. A pandemic that the sitting president <coughs> ignored for the first four months and downplayed it and pretended it didn't exist and created the crisis in the first place. Right. They're attacking provisional ballots. They're uh, requiring voter ID, which there's nothing. <coughs> Take a drink here. I'm joking. <laughs> That's how much I hate these rules. <laughs> there's nothing in the con Constitution that says uh, voter ID is required. To cast your vote. Nowhere. So, I don't know where they're coming up with that one. Uh, they're targeting voter registration. They're making it harder to register. Mm -hmm. they're, they're requiring different requirements to now register. Uh, they're instituting registration purging. So, normally with registration purging, if you don't vote in so many elections, they purge you from the voter registration role. Well, that number of elections is usually like four, five, something like that, presidential elections. Now they're saying if you don't vote in the last one, you're not registered anymore. Oh, see, that's... You that's... need to register again to vote. Um, they're restricting student voting, making it difficult for students because before they would make it accessible to students to vote during student hours and stuff like that at colleges. They're restricting that. And they're limiting polling places to make it harder to vote. So people who are... Again, disabled, infirm, aged, people that don't drive. They're making them drive, travel hours to get to a voting place to cast a vote, knowing that they won't vote because they're the people that they don't want voting because they're going to vote for the opposition. Right, right. So that's some of what we're looking at here. Not specifically against women, but affecting Just, everybody. Right, right. And you figure it's the lower income more likely the people of color. Yep. That's the areas that the that they're really targeting. Absolutely. So what's your next one? <sighs> <laughs> Abortion. Somehow, after nearly 50 years, this is still a matter of debate. Instead of being an ideological discussion anything to do with abortions has turned into a political discussion which generally means that all logic is out the window with it there is a real threat to women's reproductive rights with the recent leaked draft of the opinion by the supreme court that now wasn't just a leak because now it has come to fruition that they have now overturned roe v wade More on that later. Later on. <laughs> <laughs> Deep cleansing breaths. Deep cleansing breaths. Okay. Let's go back to employment and pay. So on average, women earn 82 cents for every dollar that a man earns. In comparing salaries over 350 jobs, women actually earn less in nearly all jobs. Women earn less than their same race and ethnicity. Uh, their, uh, 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 their counterparts at entry-level positions um, of education attained as well. So the pandemic uh, is estimated to have set w the women's labor force back more than 30 years. So there's that, that progress that we're losing. That astonishes me that during the pandemic that that even, you know, happened. Um, finally, uh, leadership in government, <laughs> um, you know, again, we now finally have a woman vice president. How many years did that take? Um, you know, and then you even look, back how far was the la you know went the the first vice president female vice president was in the the 80s 80s late 80s 
and then Geraldine Ferrara. Ger- Geraldine Ferrara. Nom- nominated. Nomination. Never elected. And then you even had Sarah Palin, the second, never elected. Right. So it took three women, but how many years, obviously, to yeah. get to that position? Another interesting thing, um, for the first time in our history as a government, there will be two female signatures posted on currency in our country because we will have the treasurer will has secretary of treasury secretary of the treasurer and what's the other signature that's on the the bill i can't think of what it is but that was something that came out in in the news because of a newly appointed uh position top two women in money right <laughs> so and i'll tell you so while that that's Nice that we've gotten to that point. What annoys me is every time the press takes the, oh, this is the first time a woman did this, and this is the first mm-hmm. time a woman. Right. It annoys me that we're saying that. Right. It's it's annoying that we have to say yeah. anything like that. And when you look at, obviously, there are other countries in the world that will never have women in government. But then there are other countries that have had women in leadership and yeah. had women in politics lo- so much longer, and they kind of look at us and go, how backwards and, are you? And these women were incredibly strong, competent women who overshadowed their previous male counterparts by a long shot right. in most cases. So it, it, it just baffles me with as progressive as we say we are as a country, we're so backwards yeah. than so much more. Well, and the thing that annoys me when we say it's the first woman to do this, that fact doesn't annoy me. But what annoys me is that attention that we draw to it being the first woman to do that is the same attention that the detractors use. Mm-hmm. Oh, well... You know, you have a first woman in, in the treasury and look at what the economy is like. As if it's their fault. Right. That, and they use that fact that they're a, they're a woman right. as justification for how things are in, in the state. Of, and it right. annoys me that they do that. Right. And the other thing, too, is how many women had to do so many other things to get that person, to lift that woman up. Absolutely. To, to do that. That's... That's standing, the thing. Standing on the shoulders of giants. Absolutely. And and women like Kamala Harris was mm-hmm. extremely complimentary and appreciative mm-hmm. of all the women that came before her that gave her the opportunity mm-hmm. that that she has today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a lot of lot of obstacles out there mm-hmm. that we need. To we overcome. we've come far, but we haven't come far enough. Right, and it's almost like the old boys network. Mm-hmm. Their attitude is almost like, all right, well, we threw you a bone. Now shut up and go away right. for a while. Okay, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Like they're terrified of having an equal playing field, mm-hmm. and they think trickling little bits out here and there will keep the masses occupied and, and quiet them down mm-hmm. when they get a little riled up mm-hmm. which is unfortunate that's why you, you you know the one thing that i think might come out of this supreme court ruling is that a lot of rich white guys might not have a career in politics moving forward anymore let's hope and pray we'll talk Pray-er, about prayers that. and thoughts <laughs> we're going to take our last break and we'll talk about that when we come back <laughs> Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. 
Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So women's rights are human rights. Damn Skippy. And (laughs) as of yesterday, I think we've seen a significant encroachment upon women's rights. You think? So this is our open discussion on Roe versus Wade uh, and abortion in general. You have the floor, dear. I don't even know where to Rip into it. How about we start with just the hypocrisy of the Supreme Court's decision? Because the day before, they had a very contradictory decision. Absolutely. They said that you could carry a gun, that it's okay to to carry around a, a gun now. You don't need to conceal it anymore. Right. So New York had had some very common sense gun safety laws. Designed, For over 100 years. Designed to save lives. Right. Which the Supreme Court decided that was a constitutional violation. Right. Where if you read the Constitution and the Second Amendment, mm-hmm. nowhere in there does it say anything about carrying concealed weapons by citizens. Right. It speaks entirely about pertaining to a well-regulated, regulated militia. militia. Right. Which, for some reason, everyone seems to want to ignore that. So, right. So, because it's su- all up for interpretation. Yep. That's what that's what it is. So. so, the Supreme Court decides that we're going to do away with common sense gun law to say to because it's against people's constitutional rights. Mm-hmm. But now you can't get an abortion. Nope. So we're preserving life on one side with overturning Roe versus Wade, but mm-hmm. we really don't give a damn about it because right. you can carry guns and shoot anybody you want. Right. So one of the memes, <clears throat> our government is bold enough to force you to have a kid, but is too weak to ensure that they make it to recess alive. Yeah. That's, if that is not... That's profound. With, with between the past two days of the Supreme Court, that how yeah it's it's it it highlights the ludicrous level of hypocrisy Mm -hmm. coming out of today's supreme court right the fact that church and state is supposed to be separate but yet the church has more say over my body and i'm not a member of a church right my religion I am Jewish, if you didn't know. My religion states abortion is okay because my life is more important than what is in my body, what is in my womb. And until what is growing in my womb can live and take three breaths on its own, it doesn't have a choice over me. Well, you could also interpret the the two rulings from the Supreme Court of you can have an abortion as long as you don't mind getting shot in the process. Right. Right. And unfortunately, there has been violence that has happened at clinics that aren't even performing abortions. Because that's the other thing, is that everybody goes after Planned Parenthood. Oh, they're, you know, they're doing all these abortions and da 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 That's not even their main purpose, that they are giving health care to, to women. And somebody going there just for a routine checkup is risking their life from these crazy psychopaths who are trying to save the unborn child, but yet are taking their gun to go kill people. Well, and to play devil's advocate for a minute there, you have people who are uh, uh, pro-abortion who are also attacking anti-abortion clinics as well. So you've got violence on both sides. You've got crimes being committed on both sides. But if nothing else, that should simply highlight the level of passion involved here 
that the decision that the Supreme Court made to overturn a previous Supreme Court right. decision, which honestly, that's where I have my biggest problem. Right is the Supreme Court has basically made itself useless. Right. They decided that no matter what we decide, it doesn't matter because the guys five years from now can overturn it. Right. And that's where now, okay, so everybody's, you know, kind of, you know, you have the, the people that are like, oh, well, it's still at the state level and da-da-da-da-da, and, and now you can still travel to, to get to states even though they were – passing laws saying that you couldn't and that there were certain laws where, you know, if the doctor performed one, they were going to be jailed and the woman who received it was going to be jailed and, and, and all this other, but this isn't where it's going to stop. Right. That's the thing that most people aren't looking at is now that you've taken this away, now all these other rights, rights of, you know, gay and lesbian couples. You now you're seeing that there are people out there that are, you know, get a hold of a lawyer, make sure everything is written and that you have legal documentation. If you have children, make sure there is legal documentation. Make sure you have copies of your birth certificates and and everything that both parents are listed. If you got married in a state that is in danger of overturning your marriage decision. I have various clergy friends that are now offering free to remarry you in a state that, that is protecting you. Um, you know, and, and so, and the contraception, that's another thing that now, uh, you know, Oh, thank God for Clarence Thomas, you know, for for everything. But you know what law he's not going to overturn is loving because that affects him because he's married to a lovely white woman who but all all the recent things he's he's picking in, you know, to, oh, well, I can't do that one, but I can do this one. And this is the problem that I have is that our current Supreme Court has turned into an activist court. Mm -hmm. And their job is to rule on, on the constitutionality mm -hmm. of laws and situations. Right. It's not to make new laws. It's not to overturn laws. The Supreme Court should never be able to overturn a Supreme Court decision. Right. Because the Supreme Court is the Supreme Court. Right. It's the law of the land. Right. If they can overturn their own decisions, mm -hmm. where do you go from there? Right, exactly. And that's the thing is now what else is on the books that you can overturn? Right. The only way a Supreme Court decision should be overturned is with a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that should overturn. Right. So a couple of things that come out of this. One, you're going to see an assault on other freedoms that the mm -hmm. right wing nut jobs in the Supreme Court don't agree with. That's yep. the number one concern. Number two you're going to push decisions like this down to the state. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have 50 different laws in 50 different states governing all these different things. We're basically becoming 50 different countries at yep. this point. Yep. The other problem that I have is now, because you're going to see the Supreme Court overturning Supreme Court precedent, the only way to defend against that is a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. And to think of our politics today and... Who, you know, how the, the, that razor sharp edge that we're on right now mm -hmm. between Republican and Democrat, to think that these idiots would contemplate doing uh, amendments to the Constitution terrifies me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we thought we were ripping the Constitution apart with the 2020 election. These, these people are, are just itching to rewrite it in their favor. Mm -hmm. And that's what scares me more than anything else. Yes, the whole abortion thing is probably never should have gotten to the Supreme Court because really it's it's not, and at least it shouldn't have gotten there in the form that it did because abortion is not a constitutionally protected right. Your health is, your personal well-being is, and that's how it should have been presented mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court and then you couldn't overturn it at that Right, point. right. But things that go to the Supreme Court now don't matter. Right. Because after a couple of years and you get a couple of justices retire, whoever happens to be president at the time, they're going to switch it their way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a real threat. 
that Joe Biden might pack the Supreme Court now because of the, the situation that's going on. Mm-hmm. So then, okay, so five years down the line, when we have a new president out there, what's going to happen there? Are right. we going to wind up with 50 Supreme Court justices? Because every time a new president comes in, they want to make sure that the court's tilted in their favor. Mm-hmm. Like, like, it's this decision breaks the country. Mm-hmm. In so many ways. Yeah. Do you feel threatened by this? Absolutely. Absolutely. And fortunately, again, I'm an older woman. Ugh, as much <laughs> as that hurts me. <sighs> Who... I, I know if... Again, something were to happen, I have the means, I have the ability to get the help that I would need. No matter what, because again, we live in a state where it is still legal and will probably always remain legal. I worry about women, girls, Trans men, even, who live in areas where they don't have it accessible and can't get the help that they need. Yeah. That's, that's what makes me angry. And, you know, I, I, I want to go fight. <laughs> what do you think needs to happen? To set this right. What what does the government, the president, the Supreme Court, citizens, what do we have to do to, to fix this and, and, and have it stay fixed? Because we thought it was fixed. Right. And, and that's the thing is there are certain states where it is fixed. No matter what the law of the land is, it's, you know, it was voted in. <sighs> and that's, I think, what is so frustrating is that why does it even need to be that way why do people have to vote on it you know if i want to go and buy a pack of cigarettes i can go and buy a pack of cigarettes what what does it what does it matter if i want to you know do that and 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 i've never been a smoker and you know i would never want to to smoke but yet you can go and you know, that's what's just so your point there being it's your body you can do what you want to do right you know and and granted i i got into a a discussion a little bit of a debate with with a friend of mine that from high school where you know again my body my, my choice and she's anti-vax and you know but very liberal in certain respects and conservative and you know she's kind of like all, all over the board like she would never get a vaccine because she just doesn't trust the government you know and and when i you know and, and i said but you know I, I don't have to do certain things or i can do certain things and you know she said well you wore a mask when you were told to and i was like i wore a mask because I was protecting myself. And guess what? I still wear a mask now, even though the majority of the people don't. And yes, I am fully vaccinated and boosted and whatever, but I'm still wearing a mask because I don't want to get sick. But if, you know, I think back to when I was in college and if I had gotten pregnant in college... I wasn't ready to be a, a a mother then, you know, so, and then there are, are women that, you know, have other medical issues. You know, my, my best friend had to have a late term abortion because if she had carried her baby to term, she could have died. Right. So, it shouldn't be something that's a law that you're forced to do or not to do. It's your body. It's your choice. 
And and the hypocrisy, again, that we always seem to go back to the hypocrisy of this. So the Supreme Court ruled in a case where uh, members of the armed forces sued the army or whatever branch of the government, branch of the military they were in, when they were told that they had to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And the Supreme Court ruled they didn't have to. They had a right to choose. Right. If you have a right to choose whether or not you take a vaccine, how do you not have a right to choose whether or not you carry a child to, to, to term? Right. Isn't carrying that child to full term far more impactful than getting a vaccine? Right. Where you would think you would have that, that option? And the hypocrisy of it, too, is if men had the ability to carry. Now, granted, trans men can. I don't want to exclude them. But if these white <laughs> cis men were, were, you know, at risk of their, their body harming them, you know, because think about it, you know, when, when, and, and you've mentioned it numerous times, you, you know, especially g- watching me go through childbirth and what happened during, I ended up having to have an emergency C-section because our daughter was, was in distress and, and you got to see firsthand what my body went through. You've said time and time again, there's no way in hell you would have, been able to do that right and i bet you if you polled you know the majority of men would you be willing to go through childbirth would you be willing to do all these things no no they wouldn't but yet you'll put your partner or your wife or your mistress <laughs> Yeah. You'll engage in an act and not have any thought process behind that. Yeah. The The other interesting hypocrisy here is they're forcing women to carry children to full term. Are they forcing the sperm donor to be a father, to be there, to have any level of responsibility? And And, and that's the thing is that that at the moment of conception, that's when you should be paying child support. Right. Absolutely. And and you you don't get to walk away now. Yep. That that is now you know th- there were a couple of memes like Happy Father's Day. You're now going to be a dad because of that one night stand because you you know you decided you know you didn't want to put a condom on. Right. We're up against the clock here, but I did want to raise one more point. We had talked about it off the air, and I think it's worthwhile mentioning because I think it's a great example. Tell us about the adoption one. Oh, yeah, let me bring that one up. So this was... This was an interesting... Because I thought this was very poignant. Yes, this, you know, this was recently posted and is something for the Supreme Court to consider. Can a 13-year-old girl adopt a baby if she wants to? No, obviously not. Are you nuts? What about a 15-year-old girl? Can she adopt a baby if she feels like it? Nope, absolutely not. All right, how about an 18-year-old girl? Surely she could adopt a baby, right? Mm, No, still can't. Well, what if she was 20, no longer a teenager? A 20-year-old can definitely adopt a baby if she feels like it, right? Actually, no. Well, weird. Why not? There are over 400,000 children in foster care, so why can't she adopt at least one of them? She just can't. And you know why? Because you have to qualify to adopt a child. There are rigorous background checks, home visits, proof of financial and mental stability, etc. It's a whole thing, right? But if she is 14 and gets impregnated, by an abusive ex-boyfriend who shoved her out of his moving car and left her for dead, she must now carry to term, give birth, just figure it out somehow? Yes, that is correct. But she's only 14. She will figure it out. But she should also have been more careful and made better choices. 
So, to punish her for her poor choices, we force her into motherhood, which we've established she's totally unqualified for. And now we are suddenly comfortable with a young, traumatized girl caring for a vulnerable, little screaming human being that is wholly reliant on her for survival? Yes, absolutely. Such an unexpected blessing. And I think that right there sums up the problem. We have standards for what it means to be a qualified parent. Yep. We enforce them in one instance in adoption. We ignore them completely in every other instance. Mm-hmm. Anything else to be said on the matter at this point? Vote. Yep. Stay angry. Let your voice be heard. That is the only silver lining I see here, is that they're forcing this onto the states, which means your elected leaders will now not be able to hide behind a Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to go on record on the voting roll call on whether or not they support this. And unlike the Supreme Court justices, the three Supreme Court justices that Trump appointed, who all said on the record that they would not mm -hmm. overturn Roe versus Wade, and they did, right? you can hold these politicians accountable by voting them out of office. Absolutely. The other thing, too, is I've seen people posting, I currently live in a red state. I need to move. I had another friend whose children are getting ready to go to college and have now changed which schools they're considering mm. now. If only we could impeach Supreme Court justices for perjuring themselves during their confirmation hearings. And that's something, you know, that, that's, that's making the rounds. So. so that's all we had today. Did you have anything else before we go? <sighs> Resist. Resist. <laughs> there you go. Before we do go, I did want to once again invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights Into Tomorrow. Video and audio of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights Into Things. Uh, we're available on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, anywhere you can get a podcast. Uh, we would also ask you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us your topics you'd like us to discuss. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash insights underscore things. We do stream uh, five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. You can find high resolutions of all of our video on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can find us on Instagram at instagram.com backslash insights into things. Where you can find links to all this and, and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. That's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.